Hey all today we're going to do some aquarium maintenance and I thought I'd give it a, a little bit of a twist and we're going to time it. The goal for today is to share out a few of my secrets on how I make my aquarium maintenance streamlined and as easy as possible. I know after doing years and years of aquarium maintenance it can become a big chore and we all burn out. I pulled out my trusty bucket, my box that elevates that bucket. And you'll see I have the cameras out. I actually have multiple views so that you can really see what's going on today. The first thing you'll notice is my tubing slash baster setup. Um, it's simply a baster with a tip cut off so it has a wider flow. And then I think it's quarter inch or half inch tubing, something that's very controlled. And then I rubber band the two together and I use uh, that siphon starter that was that green uh, black bulb in the beginning to get that siphon going instead of sucking on the hose. This is a great way to remove all the mulm from the substrate, at least the upper layer of substrate where most of it's going to collect. I use the 80-20 rule. I try to use 20% of the effort to get 80% of the results instead of trying to get it all. These maintenances, by the way, uh, I consider mini maintenances and I do them weekly on uh, all of my aquariums. And they consist of removing any mulm buildup in the substrate before it gets too bad. Then move on to water change and then uh, inspect all the equipment as well as clean the uh, filter. And let's get some of this mulm out of here. These fish out of the um, Espe Rasboras, and I absolutely adore them. They have been with me quite a while. I bought 20 juveniles, I think in 2019. Their numbers dwindled down from 20 to 11, uh, unfortunately. I, I want to say all nine losses were jumpers, uh, which can happen because I'm running a rimless tank and if they don't like the aquascape or they're not comfortable in it they can get spooked easily and jump. Um, I found out the main reason they were jumping was uh, I had a jet flow pipe on there and they love to surf that flow and they'll get to the end of the tank and jump right out. Uh, very sad. Uh, figured it out and uh, ended up putting lily pipes on there so it's much more uh, gentle flow throughout the tank and that has solved the problem. Along with this wonderful forest scape, I love uh, that the fish can swim in and out and have a lot of um, visual breaks. It keeps them active and hunting the whole time and also gives them room to space out. So you can see that um, this this method here uh, takes a little bit of patience with the turkey baster and I'm just gently uh, directing a jet of water into the uh, cracks and crevices and you can see the little puffs of mulm getting sucked up into the siphon. And this is really an effective method to keep your tank clean clean. The plants uh, surprisingly will create a lot of detritus or, or mulm, that brown stuff that's on the bottom. And in this case, I have the wood in there and a lot of that wood and it's known as grease wood and it is dirty and it's a bit smelly still even after all of this time. I put the aquarium together in I think it was December and so this wood has been waterlogged for a long time. But uh, I really love the look of it. I think it looks awesome. Anyway, so I, I, I'm willing to put up with all this mulm. Um, it takes, and we'll see here, this is all time so I'll hold up the thing. You'll see in a bit how long this takes to do this process. 
but I can tell you um, without spoiling it that the uh, bucket there, that's a five gallon bucket and I fill that up twice. So I'll remove 10 gallons that way. And uh, you'll see, I didn't even try to hide this camera at all. Uh, you can see what it takes to, to film something like this. Um, actually, I have three cameras running and um, the box there is to elevate it up so I can control the flow from the tank into the bucket and not have to bend over too much. You can see that I, when I've got one arm in the tank and then one with controlling the flow um, at the bucket and I can put my thumb over the end of it and stop the flow and then start it. Uh, I like to take this water. This is just nutrient rich water. I take it out to our front flowers. My, my wife appreciates it. The flowers look fantastic um, all the time. So yeah, don't, don't flush this stuff. It's good stuff. So if I accidentally suck up a shrimp or uh, some soil I didn't or you know, a piece of moss or whatever, I can either try to release it back into the tank um, or uh, I'll know I'll be able to see it with the control flow and then I'll fish it out of the bucket uh, before I dump it. Shrimplets uh, are typically the thing I have to worry about. Um, this tank maybe has 25 adult Neocaridinia shrimp. They're the blue variety and they're difficult to see the shrimplets. Uh, they're almost black. So sometimes I will get a shrimplet or two during this maintenance. No big deal because they they populate. In fact, they overpopulate and I constantly am finding myself pulling them and giving them away or putting them in other tanks, um, feeding them to larger fish if I have larger fish on hand. You can see uh, in the front here, I have dwarf baby tears, a small amount of it right up against the glass. Um, in fact, right after this maintenance session, I took the scissors and trimmed that all down so it's really tight to the uh, substrate. Um, the other foreground plant that you see there is Mercilia hirsuta is the larger variety. I also have the other two varieties in here. Um, I'm not sure if it's two varieties or just a new name. Uh, the other is Cronata, so Mercilia Cronata, and the other one was, I believe it was Minima. You can look back in the planting video for this one. Um, so they shipped it in three different labels. Uh, it does seem like the Minima does stay smaller than the Cronata. The Minima I, I placed in the back along the path. So it goes from Hirsuta in the front to Cronata in the middle to Minima in the back to accentuate that sense of depth. And you can see um, taking out this mulm is a bit of a chore, but it really is not that big of a deal. And it really lets you get in tune with your aquarium and really take a good look, a very good close up look of what's going on so that you can really dial in your aquarium. Are the plants healthy? Are they rooted well? Do they come out easy if you blast a little jet of water on it? In the front here, they're very well rooted. Uh, on that note, um, this was intended to be a contest like aquarium. Um, I have no intentions of really entering it, you know, and really pushing the rankings, but I think it would be fun at this point that it would be a nice one to enter and just see where it does rank. Let me know in the comments uh, if you think I should enter a contest with this and which contest that would be. It looks like I'm finishing up the second bucket here and I spill, I spill a lot. So those drips and stuff, if, you know, you see that this wood is bare. It just has stain on it. I didn't seal it. This is poplar wood on these stands and I will do an episode uh, on the channel here about these stands and my shelves and that and why I chose this wood and how I built these stands. Um, here we go, here's the time. So we're at 12 minutes. You can see I was very patient. I was not rushing this. So we're at 12 minutes. It took 12 minutes to remove the mulm. So that's not very much time investment over the week. You can see I'm just standing around itching my back. 
Yeah, lugging buckets. Uh, I I hate lugging buckets. <laughs> Nobody likes lugging buckets, but two of them is not so bad. Um, this is not sponsored by that bucket logo there. <laughs> yeah, or that box label. Uh, that box is a um, a workout tool uh, to do different exercises with. Uh, I bought it years and years ago and it's become my aquarium box. Yeah, okay, so I gotta relocate the camera because we're gonna shift gears here. Now that the uh, soil siphoning is done, you can see the Awaza Bio Orb down below that is full of cactuses. Uh, I don't know if that's accurate. It's, I guess, more technically, it would be succulents. It's really outside of my realm of expertise. Um, Awasa hooked me up with this bio orb, and uh, I love it. I chose succulents because it's super low maintenance, and I don't need more chores. So, um, yeah, because I have this and two other aquariums, um, just a little bit smaller than this one. And that time does add up, even though you're going to see in this video that this isn't very long. Um, you can see that I'm really taking my time with this uh, and just kind of trying to figure this out. A lot of times I'll be a little bit more methodical and a little bit quicker on what I'm doing. But when you get the filming equipment out, everything seems to take twice, if not three times longer. So this is one of my favorite things. This is the Wasa Biomaster. This is the pre-filter sleeve that I'm taking out. So normally I would take this over uh, to the bathtub and rinse it all out there, but I wanted to show you all what this looked like. So this was cleaned last week. And again, using the 80-20 rule, 20% 20 effort to get 80% of the gook out of the tank. So the same rule for the filter. I'm basically just dumping out, uh, actually I haven't even dumped out. I wanted to get a container here to show you this. So this is what this looks like. Oh, yeah, more spilling. Good job, Jeff. And then splashing, because the sponges, they usually stick to the um, the other part, but yeah, they didn't this time. I think it's just the way I was doing it. So anyway, um, I'll take this over to the uh, tub, rinse out the inside. There'll be a lot of plant matter a lot of decaying leaves that are sucked in and um so i'll rinse that out bring it back over and the next step is to take the uh, i'm trying to think of the name of this part inlet screen or i don't i don't know i can't remember what this part is called but basically a uh, sliding a alternate set of sponges this yeah, like i said this is the best part because that that was my filter maintenance so um, just looking at the timer on here, we're at like two and a half minutes and I'm moving really slow. Honestly, this usually takes under a minute. Uh, come back, Jeff. Let's show off the dirty water. Look at that. So that's how much mulm from the wood and plants is going into those pre-filters. And I find the pre-filters are really great at stripping out the mulm and uh and not allowing it to get into the main chamber of the filter i still um get into the filter every once in a while like every six months or so and take the head unit off which is the where the impeller is and uh, i clean the tubing out and um the impeller uh, as well as the heater you'll see there will be a lot of biofilm buildup on those and it will reduce your flow I probably should do it every three to four months, honestly. Um, but uh, I always stretch it out, it seems like. Not smart, but yeah, you know what? That's, that's aquarium maintenance it's chore, right? We always push these things off. But I find if I stay on these weekly maintenances, it's pretty minimal. Change up the camera again um, so you can see the tank. And you can see the adjoining bathroom. Uh, that is where... I have my hoses hooked up. So I, I will drain uh, to that, uh, either the toilet um, or the tub, 
or outside, depending on the day. Uh, today was not conducive to doing that. I don't like leaving the door open because we are in pollen season and I would have nothing but yellow pollen all inside my house. And if you've ever dealt with the Atlanta pollen season, you know how ferocious it can be and how uh, much of an irritant it can be on your, your lungs, your nose and your eyes. So I've pulled the, the hose over. I attach a pump on there. I set it with suction cups. So I set the level of the water change and let it ride. Um, and I turn that pump on. I find that that is a great thing. If you're using gravity to do your water change, it's slowing you down immensely. Um, I found that my water changes took less than half the time when I added the pump to bring the water out of the tank. Uh, so to drain it down and then I can just move that over and fill it back up. You can see here during this, I'll wave off any of this extra mulm uh, that settled back down uh, and get as much again out of the tank as I can. And if I don't get it all, no big deal. The pre-filter will grab some after uh, we fill it back up and turn it on. Uh, and you know, just that little bit is not gonna harm anything. It's just the accumulation. You don't want the accumulation to happen. Uh, an interesting fact about this tank is that all of that wood is just standing there. Yeah, um, I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> There's no adhesives in this tank. So you can see when I bump it and that it moves around. So yeah, squash the, I'm squashing the dwarf PB tears down there and um, tighten them up to the to the substrate. It's a nice trick to keep it nice and compact. Always carry your towel around with you too, uh, so that you minimize the drips and all that. Uh, I don't think you can have enough towels. So let's take a look at these sponges. These, uh, these are the sponges that were in there for the week. Um, so what I'm doing is squeezing them out in aquarium water. Uh, earlier you saw that I was putting um, the beige pitcher, a couple of those, so it was maybe a gallon of water into that white bucket. Squeezing them out and uh, putting them back in that container, that's their home, and I'll stick that on the shelf and use it for the next week. So let's move the camera around here, Jeff, and take a good look at what that water looked like after a week. Yeah, that's a lot, right? That looks pretty darn dirty. That is one week's worth of mulm. Crazy, right? So if I would stopped doing this, this tank wouldn't look the same. It just, it just wouldn't. Um, I'd probably have a lot more trouble. I've had issues with staghorn algae in this aquarium and it's not your standard staghorn. It looks a little different. And there are so many varieties of algae, it's impossible to get a, an ID, nor, nor does it much matter. So I, I know it's staghorn. I know it's growing off of the decaying wood. Um, it gets a little bit on the stones and a smidge on the plants. The plants are very healthy and resistant to the staghorn. So I've been using hydrogen peroxide. You'll see it on the floor on the wide angle. Um, and I'll usually do that. And I forgot during this maintenance, I'll usually take about 50 mils, 50 milliliters, and I'll use a pipette and, um, and squirt it right onto the infected areas. Uh, and this is enough to keep it in check. I'm not able to eradicate it, but I'm not concerned because I know it's long um, as it's not getting out of control and um, becoming a visible nuisance. Um, you can see here it looks pretty good, even though there are staghorn patches here and there. It's really tight to up to the, um, the wood. It gets maybe one or two millimeters long, uh, as long as I keep it in check. Uh, you can see I'm putting things away at this point. So we're about to reverse the flow. Um, there goes the blue bucket. You can see the hydrogen peroxide there on the floor. Um, and it uh, looks like, yeah, so I'm now at the point where I'm sucking air, so it's time to reverse this. And uh, I unplug the pump and change the or set the temperature at the taps using the hot and the cold uh, to get it to about 75 degrees where I keep the temperature of the tank. 
Uh, I also get my dechlorinator. I use the water conditioner from Aqualife. Um, they are kind enough to send it to me at no charge um, for my feedback. And it's been very positive feedback on this product. Yeah, so now time to check temperature. I have a thermometer. It's a digital readout thermometer. And I've checked it against a couple of other sources. But yeah, I'm, I'm setting it to 75. And I've actually calibrated that, not calibrated, but checked that thermometer against two other thermometers to make sure I'm in the ballpark. And quite honestly, if we're within three, four, five degrees, it's not going to hurt the fish and certainly not the plants. So in with the water conditioner, uh, I put it right in the beginning as soon as I turn on the fill. It's never been an issue just to dump it in and fill the tank up. Uh, the chlorinator works instantaneously and I do, um, I do add a little bit extra dechlorinator than what the directions call for, just to be safe because I know my chlorine levels vary throughout the year. I don't know what I'm, oh, I know what I'm doing here. So we're gonna take a look at what I do to remineralize. So I don't use RO water, but I still have to add remineralization. And this is how I do it. So I use these dry powders. One is Epsom salts, one is calcium sulfate, and one is potassium sulfate. In this size aquarium for potassium, I do a quarter teaspoon for that much of a water change. And then I do one tablespoon of, uh, I'm sorry, one half tablespoon of Epsom salts. That's for magnesium, which my water is completely deficient in. So I add calcium sulfate, a quarter teaspoon, and you can add them all together to your, your um, water, stir it up and set it aside. And as the tank fills back up, we're gonna go ahead and dump that in. Again, this is slower because I'm filming. So uh, hopefully you're picking up on some of just the little nuances of what I do during this process. You can see what kind of a pain it is to film all this. I swear, it's so much harder to do filming than it is just doing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some of the remineralization. I did about half and then I scooped up some more tank water in there to refill the cup and uh, give it a good stir again and I'll let it fill the rest of the way and then empty the rest in. I don't know as it much matters. You could probably dump it all in the beginning or all at the end, but this is how I do it. And I double check temperature. I can't tell you how many times that's burned me where all of a sudden in the, I'll um, take my eye off of it and somehow the temperature changes. Hey, there, I got the temperature in the shot there. Uh, you can see that was a little bit under 75. So like I said, within a few degrees, it does not matter. The fish don't care. They don't even notice, I don't think. Mm. Now you can see the water's a little bit cloudy. That'll clear up after the, after the remineralization. What do you think? The, the aquarium looks really great, doesn't it? I'm so happy with those plants. Um, the Ranunculus inudatus is that crazy fern looking one and I'm really chopping that thing back all the time. I need to work on the, the back. See how nothing is, nothing is secured. <laughs> all of this wood is just standing up there. See how I'm balancing this back out? All of it is like this. Uh, which is really cool because I can move it around on the fly. Um, some of the pieces are embedded in the substrate in the back, but the rest of them are just standing right on top of the substrate. Uh, so I can move pieces around if I want. In fact, I've removed about four pieces because I felt it was too crowded. Uh, I've moved pieces around. In fact, that piece I just uprighted, I found it unnecessary and it was just kind of a pain. So I removed it after this video. So, you know, take this time, get familiar with the tank, again with the towel. So you can see it's filling up. Uh, I fill up a little bit slower. Um, and the reason being, so I, I could double the, this flow uh, coming back into the tank but I find that I get a lot of bubbles, a lot of fine bubbles, they'll stick to the bodies of the fish. It's not great for the fish. So I slow it down and then I don't have that 
problems. And what that is, is the water's under pressure and it has a higher uh, amount of dissolved gases in it, like oxygen, nitrogen, CO2, all of these gases in the air um, coming out. Uh, a lot of folks will say, you know, oh, my tank pearls so much after I do a water change. Well, that's not, that's really probably not pearling uh, in most cases, uh, though you will see a pearling effect. But most of it is just the um, gases coming out of the uh, solution. Because that's right. Yeah, so it's off gassing. Equilibrizing. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, tank is almost full. Wipe it down. You see the fish. The fish, through this whole process, you can see that they were never uh, uncomfortable. They, they just kind of you know, swim around, they're happy, they're used to this process because I do it weekly. And they're they're very happy and uh, it's just part of their routine. And they know they're gonna get fed after this too. <laughs> um, a little bit sparingly. I added um, fertilizer there, liquid fertilizer. I rely mostly on root fertilization these days. The liquid fertilizer, I add one uh, pump of that per day in this tank. I find that that's a good amount. Any more than that and the staghorn gets a little bit squirrely on me. Um, and the plant growth is really great. I think you can see that in this um, in this video. So um, I want to say the recommended dose is two pumps per day. And I'm doing 50%. So if that helps you gauge your own tank's growth, uh, this is under fairly, um, I would say it's medium lighting. We're at about 50 or 60 par at the base of the aquarium, down where that dwarf baby tears is. And maybe 100, uh, 120 at the very top of where the stems are. Um, and I have such a small variance in those par numbers because look how far the light is off the tank. Uh, this eliminates a lot of the hot spots. Hot spots are really good at giving you algae. So I encourage you to get the light up off the tank. It, it, uh, it helps you even the light distribution out, like I just said, and it also makes maintenance a lot easier. That light's not in my way. I can get in the top of the tank anywhere I need to and it's simple so if you can get the light off the tank and i actually have it on something called cable grippers look for those they are amazing you can i can raise and lower that light i can raise one side um, up more than the other uh, and then what i do is i draw marks on the cable so i know where to reset it every time i run my light it's usually about 11 inches above the water line on all my aquariums. I find that that's the sweet spot to keep the strength and uh, minimize light spill as well as um, removing the hot spots. Um, time to put the box away. You can see it's all it's all done at this point. Boxes away, the buckets are away, the uh, powders are away. Um, see all those black curtains? Uh, this is the curse of filming in this room photography and filming is a nightmare because i have five doors and two large windows and all these reflective surfaces so i get um, horrible reflections and uh, i want you to be able to enjoy what's in the tank and <laughs> that's why i have these black blackout curtains um, on two sides of the room Let's wrap this up. This is the moment here. I'll grab the iPad with the running timer on it. We'll see where we came in at. Uh, 34.49, so almost 35 minutes. And you can see I was moving very slowly. I hope this helped. I hope it uh, gives you a little peek into the behind the scenes. This is where the true aquascaping, I think, happens, is in the maintenance. Uh, the setup is fun and exciting, but this is what separates the best aquascapers Less talking, more scaping. Later, y'all.